Hello everyone, welcome to the EC GSA Academic Seminar today. Today we have a speaker from NIST and JQI, um, Wen Chang Wu. He comes from Taiwan. He got his bachelor's degree from National Taiwan Normal University. And now he is a fourth year PhD student. He is actually working for a Nobel Prize winner, I guess. And he works in U, uh, UMD, JQI, and also NIST. Okay, so his topic today will be generating low frequency squeeze of light from the four wave maximum. Okay, so something about physics. Yes, uh, something about I mean, physics. Yes. And yes, my name is Long Sang and Travis, Travis Hongro and Brian Anderson, they are hosted in our group. And Paul D. Lent uh, is my advisor. And we are from this. But now we move back to the JQI the UND campus. Okay. And today I would like to talk about the squeeze line from foreign missing. And why why do you I will tell you why do we want to use squeeze line and why why squeeze line and why we use the foreign missing to generate the squeeze line. Yeah. And also why do we need the low frequency squeeze line? Okay. So before that talk, I want to show a video about the, the squeeze in the periscope world. Yes. So it will tell you the application of the squeeze uh, in the classical world. Actually, the squeeze in the uh, classical world, you can save the money and save the space and also save the time. So, so you can have all the space of the metro to enough. So the squeeze, the application of the squeeze for the night transportation. So yes, it's a squeeze in Tokyo. Okay. So you can use all the space. Yes. And you then you don't need to wait for the next train. And so you don't need to waste time. Okay. So it's a squeeze. And in that experiment, it's also very hard to make the squeeze because there are many conditions, like the condition of the energy conservation and the momentum conservation. So it's very hard to make the squeeze. Okay. So it's really happening in the world. But in, in the quantum world, we also can use the squeeze for the sound information, transportation, or sound measurement. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the quantum world. In the, in the quantum world, uh, actually, we, we all know why it's the laser. Laser beam is a very nice coherence source. And from the uh, quantum mechanics, it tells us there is a uncertainty principle and the uncertainty principle give, give us tell us there is a fluctuation you, you cannot measure the momentum or the the space exactly at the same time so there is a uncertainty principle tell it, it imply you in the laser field it's also the same you cannot measure the the photon number and the phase of the laser field is actually at the same time. So for a coherence laser field, the for a coherence laser field, uh, you can see this parabola line is the the line follow the, the equation, and only this side, this area, is in the real world. You you, ca you cannot make anything below the line. Yes. So, okay. So why 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 is laser a coherent field? Why is laser a coherent field? Yeah. Actually, it's a it's a very good question. Like in I thought or in two thousand or before two thousand, someone called Ika he described the laser beam with the uh, he win the Nobel Prize. Okay, and he used the coherent state <coughs> to describe the laser field. Okay, so yeah. why is the nature? <laughs> so when you uh, so what, what is the definition of a coherent field? The definition of laser field is uh, 
you can have the the laser beam have the single frequency, but it's not really single. It has a nine width, mm -hmm. and the nine width is I think it's actually come from the uh, the energy label. The you, you can decide uh, this this view is is amplified by the atomic label, and the atomic label has certain nine width. Yes. Yes. So and any does any field with the uh, frequency with a light width consider the field? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but you okay? You said that the laser field has a frequency and yes. a light width. Yes. But there must be some property that uh, prove that is a coherent field, right? Uh the coherent field usually we say is a we usually we say is a co is a single frequency, and even if pocket for a very long time, mm -hmm. it still have very good single frequency. But the single frequency is not real single frequency because the yeah, yeah okay also. so there's a light width like yes. a distribution with a yes. mean and a deep, deep standard deviation yes but if I have a field and I I also have a mean and a standard deviation mm -hmm. then can I call it a coherent field That's if it has the same distribution then yeah. you can say it's a coherent field yes okay. and there's some some distributions say, oh, what is the non classical light and what is the coherent, coherent light? They have their own distribution. And only you follow the uh, Gaussian distribution. So only it's the a, Gaussian distribution? Yes. It's a coherent speed. It's coherent. Okay. And you, you can look at some quantum artist books and you will show you they have, they have many different distributions. But for a squeeze light, it's not coherent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The coherent beam is, it has a very special property. It's only at this point. This point means you uh, are. Yeah, and that's the minimum uncertainty point, right? But the, they are all minimum because because points. you're yeah okay. But only the coherent beam has the, this curve at uh, the point at line. Yes, so the coherent beam has the minimum uncertainty. Yes, okay. in in both delta n and delta phi. Yeah. Yes. So the equal side is uh, is the coherent beam. Okay. And for a coherent beam, delta n equal to delta phi. Okay. Okay. So it's the laser line. Okay. And they they have many character to describe the coherent beam. Yes. Their distribution or <coughs> their phase and their amplitude. So the, the squeeze the squeeze beam is not a coherent beam. It's not coherent. Okay. It's a non classical light. Okay. Yes. So for the, the squeeze beam, uh, the squeeze beam means it's also it's still follow the uncertainty principle, but you can see for the phase squeeze view, the it's also follow the uncertainty principle, but the phase uncertainty of the phase is very small, so yes. you you can have very clear phase. Want to measure if you need to measure something, measure their face very exactly, then you might need to use the face squeeze field. Or the other way, you can also have the amplitude squeeze field. If you want to see some image very clearly, especially the only the amplitude, you don't care about the face information, you can measure the amplitude. How, how can you tell the field in that uh, plot? How can I tell the field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like so in the measurement, you only know the intensity. Yes. You don't know the, the phase. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you show two different plots. So how, how can I distinguish which one has a better phase uncertainty than the other? So uh, you can see for this one, Yes. Uh, there is a reference here. Here is the reference. The reference is directly from the laser beam. It's a coherence. So we know this quantity is the we we will define in experiments this quantity or this quantity is the sharp noise limit or standard quantum limit. So everything <coughs> later we will we will define the sharp noise the standard quantum limit first, and then we will say okay, this one. This noise fluctuation is only like one third or one whole quarter of the noise. 
or the shunt nodes. Yeah, okay, so if I look uh, at this plot, I see that there are some subtleties, but they are kind of uniform. But I look at the other plot, I see that there are some squeeze parts. Mm -hmm. But if I look at the peaks, mm -hmm. then I also see a big uncertainties, right? Yes. So, so if you want to see a very nice face, you will see a very big uncertainty. Why? But, but uh, because you cannot violate the uncertainty principle. Yeah. Yes, and if you want to measure the face, you can do some interference to measure the face. Mm -hmm. And then you will know, oh, why is the fluctuation, why is the noise, and then compare to the standard under limit. You, you can you can compare the the noise here, the fluctuation here with the standard quantum limit, and then you you will define how many dB you have. Like every three dB is is you have only half noise. If you have three dB squeeze, it means there's only half noise of the covariance thing. Okay. So this is the squeeze that. So the introduction is how, so for four missing, I have not yet to talk about the, what is the four missing. But I want to tell you how uh, the advantage of the four missing is it has a very strong intensity co correlated twin beam. So like you send a very strong pump beam into the sun atomic gas, then you would, uh, and, and you see the you put another laser beam into the cell, then you will generate, then the atomic energy level will generate another twin beam. So another twin beam is called twin beams, they are strongly correlated in, in a space distribution, in a space distribution. So if you send an image into the, the cell, you will generate another image, but it's a conjugate image. It's like the same spatial distribution and the time <coughs> distribution. And for four missing, we do not. Many experiments, they make the squeeze light, they, they need to use the KFT to enhance the dominarity. But in our four missing, we use a hard rubidium cell, and it's, the atomic density is very high, so we don't need to use any KFT. So without the KFT, we can have multi spatial mode squeezing, and you will reduce the noise measurements especially for the image and improve the sensitivity of the image. And it's very useful for the image processing. We can store a quantum information into an atomic, atomic coherence and then we can retrieve the, the quantum information. But if we need a very high quality image, we need to use the squeeze lab to have very high quality image. And also for inter parameters, like now for some physics, they want to measure the gravitational wave. So the gravitational wave is very weak. So when when the signal is very weak, the noise is very high. So you cannot measure the the gravitational wave or a very weak signal very precisely. So you need the squeeze that. Okay. Also, you can be used in the photo detector calibration. If you have a photo detector and you need in the satellite and you need to calibrate, but you don't have any reference, you can send the, the twin beam. One of the twin beam will will send to the detector as a trigger. It will tell the, the, the detector and say, now there is a one photon at the other side. So you need to detect one photon at the same time. If you do not detect the one photon, then your quantum efficiency is not good. So the twin beam has the benefit. You can tell you there's a one photon at the outside. So it, it can be used as a uh, product uh, calibration. And now uh, in the cell life, they have very big panel. And for a very big panel, uh, the response time is very slow. So we need to use the low frequency, low frequency squeezing to calibrate the Detector. Okay. So that's why we want to use the low frequency squeezing. So now we want to the next one is the what what is the four missing? 
Okay, there's a energy label, it's a Fermi label, A10. It's a, <coughs> it's just a, you, you can imagine that in the A10, there they are many energy labels, but we only interact with these three labels. And here, the pink one is the pump bin. We only have a one pump bin, and the pump bin is sent to the Rubidian cell. And then we, we see the, the, the four missing with the four bin. It will generate the conjugate bin. So here, the pump bin will interact with this energy, this transition, and this transition. So two photons of the pump bin will transfer, will convert it to the uh, four bin and, con and the conjugate bin. So if you send uh, these two pump bin in, it will give you two. One is pro and the other one is uh, conjugate. Okay, so, and this energy scan you will tell you the energy conservation. So, the, the final energy conservation you will know the frequency of the bin and the frequency of the conjugate bin. And also you will follow the, uh, uh, the momentum conservation. The momentum conservation tell you the H bar K is the momentum. From the one quantum mechanics, H bar K is the momentum. And K is the K in the median. So, so for the pump beam, the, the, momentum of, the uh, momentum of the pump beam is here. So we have two momentum from pump beam, two photons from pump beam. You will generate two for beam and conjugate beam. So they have a very small angle. And this small angle, uh, it, it can let you separate the probing <coughs> and the and send it to different detector. And <coughs> in the experience, we need to hit the cell, the Lubidian cell, to 120 degrees C because we need a high atomic density. And because the atomic density is very high, so probably you, you don't know why it's one point two. One point two is the, the Deuterium of the delta. Delta is the one point one two. So we need to shift the probe the pump beam to here. It's <coughs> one to one point three to one point four kilohertz shift. Because the Doppler boden when the cell is very hot, uh, there's a Doppler boden because the patents they will collide and together and then run in many ways. And when when the eight, and then guess later on they have some frequency change. What is the frequency of your pump? The frequency of the pump beam is uh, the the pump beam is uh, 795 nanometer infrared. And That's the wavelength, so it's it's around more two kilohertz. Right? kilohertz. Okay. Yeah, so one point three kilohertz is very very small to kilohertz. And the pump beam is very, uh, very high, it's around 400 mW. You, you can burn your eyes. And the CPO is very weak because it's a quantum mechanics, so we have every CPO is uh, very weak. And the angle is very small, it's around 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 because of the phase machine. Okay. So this is the sum basic theory about the, how we make the four missing. Okay, now this one might be a little bit boring. So from this, this slide, we will know, we, we, we do many tests because we want to make the low frequency squeezing. In the experience, we already made the low frequency squeezing and we try to optimize the alignment. We, we can optimize, so here is the Rubidian cell. And we send the pump in to a repeating cell and we have a C probe in this way and the angle is very small and we optimize the alignment by changing the angle here and then you can see from this figure the dash line the runway dash line is the standard quantum limit we measure the shunt noise of the laser beam so the shunt noise of the laser beam have you measured or not? So we, we send the, the, the we separate the, 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 
the probing or yeah. any discipline, and then injecting to the balance detector. And the balance detector will saturate both of the beam, and the critical noise will be cancelled, and only the quantum noise will relax. So this one is the quantum noise. You cannot subtract the quantum noise by the balance detector. So you will see here is our standard. We define this one as shunt noise. So everything below the shunt noise means you have squeezing. So you being your your so so from from this figure you can see we inject a probing and you will generate the conjugate beam and then we saturate this two beam. Do the same thing like the how we measure the shunt noise. And you will see the noise is below the standard quantum limit. And this you can see here is around 5 dB. 5 dB means the noise is only around one one quarter of the shunt noise. Close to one quarter of the shunt noise. Only 25 or only around 30-35% of the standard quantum limit. So we, we optimize the alignment by changing the angle and we can see the best squeezing here. And the, the other line you can just ignore the other line. So so we optimize the, the squeezing around here and then we change the temperature because when you change the temperature you will change the atomic density. Atomic density will change the nonlinearity. And when the atomic density is too high, we need to have a higher one point <coughs> tuning because of the Doppler volume. Yes. So you can see there's an optimized one point tuning and cell temperature to measure the, the squeezing. So, so just <coughs> by squeezing you measure the noise and you can tell about the squeezing? Yes. Yeah. So there's a noise, mm -hmm. and then you just measure the quantum noise, right? Yes. Or the center of the noise. Uh, I don't understand. Can you say that again? Okay, so you measure the noise power. Yes. Then how do you convert it back to squeezing? Oh, so so here, so like like I said, here is the standard quantum limit. Yes. And here. Yes. Oh, this one is the spectral analyzer. It's like a Fourier transform. Yeah. Yeah. It will tell you the the squeezing spectrum, and from the amplitude, the difference here, it will tell you the squeezing in the dB scale. So by squeezing, you mean the squeezing? Uh, okay. So you have more amplitude. So you have n and phi, right? Yes. So now. We only measure the intensity. The intensity, so that's n. Yes, that's n. And from from the delta n, we, we define the delta n for the laser beam here. And also we can measure the delta n for the squeeze line. Okay. Here. And the difference tells you the quality of our squeezing. Yes. So like at the beginning you can see the, the noise of amplitude has become very, very small. And you can have very high quality image system, especially for some quantum image. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, for what? what happened at the four pits? Oh, the these four pits is from the IF amplifier. Because from the energy level diagram, here is the pump beam, and here is the probe beam. And they have a little bit difference, like around 3 gigahertz. So we need to use LM. LM is, LM will generate the, a, a sound acoustic, and you will give you a diffraction of the, we, we take part of the pump beam and make a diffraction with the LM. And the LM will have some noise pitch, because uh, the, the source of the LM is some IF frequency, and the IF frequency we make by amplifier, IF amplifier. The IF amplifier cannot have very high quality source. So then you will see this piece. But if we change the IF source, then it will be different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So here we, we don't really really worry about because when we change the IF source for diffraction, then you will change the the quality of the laser beam. Okay. And this is absolutely It's still below, but it's mean at this um, at some certain frequency, mm -hmm. the the squeezing is not very good. But if it's, it's not there in the, on the blue line below. Do you mean this one? No. Uh, oh, you say for for the second one. line, the blue one. The blue line. Oh, so later I will tell you <coughs> why do we get a very high quality low frequency squeezing. You will see it's very amazing when you change the laser intensity. When you change the laser intensity from this channel to this channel is the quality of laser beam become better and better. It's, it's a little bit hard to image. When you attenuate the laser beam, the quality of laser beam become better and better, especially at low frequency. It's because you can image when there's a vacuum, vacuum also has a fluctuation because of the uncertain principle. So when there's no any light, there's only vacuum. So it will converge to the vacuum. So what data will show later? Okay, keep in mind. So so this is the way we measure, we optimize the alignment for high frequency, high frequency squeezing, and then we get the best squeezing at around one twenty four degrees C and one one gigahertz. And we also change the alignment by by changing the angle. You will change the, the alignment, the phase matching. You will change the the gain of your your linearity. Then you will change the squeezing. So this one will improve your squeezing at very very low frequency. Later I will show you when we change the alignment, the the <coughs> everything change. So the when you change the alignment, the best squeezing is changed to higher temperature of one twenty eight and one point three gigahertz. And it's it's just because the game change, so everything change, and it might be a, bit, a little bit confused, but just keep it in mind. And now I will show you. So for the uh, for this figure, the bottom line is the electronic noise. The electronic noise of the spectral horizon when there is not any input to the photo detector, there is still an electronic noise. And the, the gray line is just the pump noise. The pump, the scattering from the pump beam. I, we cannot block the pump beam very well, so there is still some leakage into the detector. So this, this noise will make your squeezing worse. Yeah. But, but we only care about these two now. So, so this graph we optimize the alignment at high frequency. You can see we can uh, see the squeezing from few hundred kilohertz to two megahertz or even higher. So we can have very high quantum quality beam for a very wide band. And then we zoom into this area. You can see we zoom into this area. We can see the noise, the squeezing. You, you can see the squeezing is change from uh, like 15 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz just by changing the power of your C4. <coughs> you can see for this one, the C4 is 129 microwatt. Uh, the output power of, of the, the red line is 129 microwatt. Output power of the, the blue line is 17 microwatt. And this is because of uh, I can jump to jump to okay now this one oh uh, so we, we do the shunt noise test uh, we we do the shunt noise test and you will see when we do the shunt noise test you can see the shunt noise test should have the slope of <coughs> one. If the slope is not one, then it's not a sharp noise limit. It's not at the standard quantum limit. So at higher and higher power, they have more and more 
technical knowledge from anything like pipe source or anything. So a low and low power you will approach to the standard quantum limit. So when there's no only power, you will only see the vacuum noise. Okay. Like this one, we do a short noise test at 100 kHz, and this one is 1 MHz. At low frequency, we have more and more technical noise. So it's, it will be very hard to have very nice low frequency squeezing because at low frequency, very I think when you study some quantum electronics, it will tell you at low frequency they have some some other frequency. So I know the short noise scale with one divided by f, right? So as our cost you increase the frequency and the short noise is lower. Is that correct? You say transfer the f the frequency. So the short noise scale with the inverse of frequency. Mm -hmm. So the, the It's not frequency, it's the power, particle power. Yeah, yeah, but you say that this is the soft noise at the uh, 100 kilohertz. Yes. The other one is at 1 megahertz. 1 megahertz. Yeah. yeah. So the 1 megahertz would have the lower noise than the, then the, the lower higher frequency. frequency you have than the lower soft noise you have, right? Yes. Yeah. That, that is one you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are all very flat. Yeah. But at lower, very, very low frequency, like 100 kilohertz here. At 100 kilohertz, you you might see there is some noise is rise up, rise up. But at lower power, you have better noise. Yes. This is it's just because everything should converge <coughs> to the quant the vacuum fluctuation. Yeah. So that's why at lower power. Ah, uh, at lower power. So, uh, I, like, I'm curious, what generates uh, soft noise in your system? The short noise in my system? Yeah. It's from the dial laser. Just from the laser? Yes, yeah, just from the laser. Because laser is the best coherence source. So we use the peak, the beam speed, and you will, you will separate the, the beam 50, 50, and then send it to the detector. And you will use these two beam subtract them and get the shut noise. Yes. I don't know how to start with from this, but it's okay. Oh, you can click the, uh, how, how do you call it? On the corner. Ah, this one? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so in the experiment, we just decrease the optical power or USC protein, you will get better and better squeeze. But this one is only this one is for the uh, high frequency squeezing, so we can only see the squeezing at 2 kilohertz. But when we change the alignment, when we change the alignment, it, it will change everything. Because at different alignment, you will have different gain, and different gain, you will give you different squeeze quality. So at this alignment for low frequency squeezing, you can see here. We can see it squeezing down to few like seven hundred hertz. Yeah, just by changing the alignment. But it is very simple. It's just because we have higher gain, and higher gain means uh, higher gain. You can higher gain means that the the intensity between pro and pump is very close to each other. Like if you have like so, if your gain is ten. This means if you give a one microwatt probe, it will generate eleven microwatt because ten plus one, and this one is a four probe, and then you will generate the conjugate beam. It's ten microwatt. But how do we subtract this to? How do we subtract this to beam? You have one microwatt left. And the one microwatt, you have many, many low frequency nodes. So you need to have a very high gain to subtract them very well. Yeah. So at very high gain, you can, you can get very, <coughs> very good low frequency squeezing. Okay. So from uh, the other group, then go in and you and use the Australian National University. They also do the same thing, and they, they just change 
I, I find this paper uh, very natural, but they have a similar result. They use different way to get the squeezing, low frequency squeezing, and they just change the power from few microwatt to few nano, and they can get very nice squeezing. The zero point zero is the standard quantum limit. So everything below the standard quantum limit is the squeeze. So they, they just change the power and they get better. But at the time, I think they, they don't know it's just because their quality is become better when they attenuate the high source. So, so they can, in the experience, they can see the squeezing below, two, along, below 300 hertz. But in our group, in two, seven, year, seven years ago, we also make the squeezing around 2.5 kilohertz. In, in their group, they use the OPO to generate the squeezing. It's very different because they, they need to use the cavity. So, so if they use the cavity, they have many limitations. But in, in our group, we don't use cavity. So, but we, at the time, we cannot make a very good squeezing. But it's very good, but not compared to their result, it's not that good. It's at around 2.5 kilohertz. And this light source is found in Thai Sapa. Thai Sapa laser. And we measure the nine width of the Thai Sapa laser. You can see uh, the blue, the red line is the Thai Sapa. When, when, when you measure the nine width of Thai Sapa, you can see it's long. Few below, few below one megahertz, and when you lock the laser, we need to lock the Thai sample laser. Then the, the intensity, the power will be more stable, but the nine width become golden, so we cannot have very nice light source to make the squeeze because the Thai sample cannot be narrowed down by locking. And we later we use the dial laser. That way, so you can just control the line width by control the, the current. So, the, you can see the blue line. Before, before, before we lock the laser, the, the line width is very, very wide. And when after we lock, it's become very sharp. So, so, we also try to lock the laser and narrow down the line width and get better and better squeezing. So you can see, uh, so the previous day, data, remember I, I only had around the squeezing at around 700 hertz, and after we lock laser, it's, it can go down to a few 10 hertz. It's much, much better than 300 hertz. <coughs> so it's just because we, we can narrow down the laser beam and have a very nice laser source to, to make the the squeezing, yes. And how we make, how we lock laser, we send out the, the laser beam and do the correction, spectroscopy, it will give you some feedback signal. And the feedback signal is sent to, we send the feedback signal to the PID controller through the dial laser and nail down the, the laser beam. You can see it's from few megahertz to few and kilohertz is the line with our laser beam. So why do you think uh, that helps? Uh, because uh, at the low frequency, if it's not coherent, then how can we have a nice squeeze? Yeah. But actually, we do not really know why does it help, because even the line with is few, few megahertz, we can still see the squeezing it. Kilohertz. I think it's because there's an intrinsic number, and when the laser drift, you will see the numbers like few megahertz. Yes. Okay, so the summary in our system, we don't have the cavity, so we can have multi spectral mode squeezing. The multi spectral mode means you can make the image squeeze, you can squeeze the image. And the low frequency squeezing, we can have the low frequency squeezing below 100 hertz. It's like two order than the previous result. Okay, and we can use very low C probe 
like in the some measurements, some biology measurements, you you cannot use a very high power because at high power you will damage the sample. But at low at low optical power then you can you can measure <coughs> the sample and without damaging the, the sample. But if you don't have squeezing at lower see at lower power you, you will have very high noise. So we need squeezing. Okay. And we can see squeezing at many different one form tuning. Also uh, we know that one, the alignment will play a very important role for the frequency squeezing and it's because the gap is different. And the, the application is we can make the quantum quality image. Like if you want to store an image system into the quantum memory, but when you retrieve the, the image, the if the image is not very clear, you can you can use the twin image to subtract them and get high quality image, quantum image from the low frequency squeezing. Also, we, we want to calibrate the power value at around few hundred hertz and compare with the NIST calibration. Because right now, the NIST calibration, they only use the classical way to calibrate the quantum efficiency of the total data. And we want to use the quantum way, a quantum source, to calibrate the, the total detector. Yes, so it's our group. Here's my advisor. And Posta, 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 posta. <laughs> yes. So it's a it's at least and it's a basically a tracking group and one of the group is non artist. And now we move back to the PSC building, it's at the sub basement. It's like the, the every every sub basement it has like two four high, so it's very very deep. Yes. Thank you. Actually, the application is important for some physics, but I think it's not important for some engineer. But I think it will be useful for the future quantum computer. Yes. Let's see. So I, I have a question, a very easy question. Mm -hmm. In that picture, you have four. Four peaks. Are those the four four waves, like you know, four wave maxing? You, you, you say yeah. four peaks. No, no. Actually, we can see uh, like 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 this one. You have different peaks here, and this is because the noise from the cavity of the tight surface. Yeah. And okay. and the other figure is we use double laser. We don't have this kind of peaks. And why do you have those sharp peaks? It's like uh, resonances of the cavity. Oh, I mean resonance. But mm -hmm. this, this one is not very sharp. So this this the is found the cavity, found the resonance of the cavity. But the other one is just this peak is very sharp. It's from the some some RC resonance of the oh, the RF RF circuit. I I don't know, but I know the amplifier is some radio frequency frequency amplifier. And it has some noise peaks, and it's pretty sharp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.